Hi, my name is Catherine Ricardo, and today I'll be presenting um, omnitic cell-wide untargeted protein metabolite interaction mapping using ion exchange chromatography. Um, I'd like to give a big thanks to uh, Ola, who let me in her lab this summer and um, let me uh, work on this project with Contagious. Okay, so what are metabolites? Metabolites are small molecular intermediates or end products of metabolism. Metabolites play many important roles in cells as energy sources, building blocks, but also as signals and regulators. Um, to exert their many functions, um, metabolites bind to proteins. Related protein metabolite interactions or PMIs can be of metabolic or regulatory importance. Evidence in, shown in this image uh, we have of tyrosine asparagine inhibiting the function of GAPC, rerouting the metabolic process of glycolysis to produce more NADPH. And although we know hundreds of PMIs, these only represent the tip of the iceberg, advances in mass spectrometry-based metabol metabol metabolomics and metabolomic metabolomics and proteomics have allowed for the development of many different biochemical approaches that are proteome-wide or metabolome-wide to determine PMIs. So the different types of detection methods of, out there are uh, either target, targeted, uh, which require a protein or metabolite bait to fish out interactors. There are many different types of methods out there for detecting targets that can either be metabolite or protein-centered. They're most relevant to us uh, there, although there are many methods out there, the most relevant to us is target identification chromatographic collusion or TIC. I'll go further into detail what this is later. The limitations, of course, are having to have a bait, which means you either need to know the protein or metabolite that you want to work with. Therefore, they're not suitable for cell-wide unbiased identification of protein metabolite uh, complexes. Additionally, as interactions take place with binding, you risk altering the conformation and characteristics of the protein. Um, to perform interactome-wide studies, untargeted methods are used to characterize many PMIs um, with a higher yield than targeted methods. One strategy is protein metabolite interactions using size separation, PROMIS, which does not require a bait protein and does not look for any specific interactions. Yet the limitation of this is, approach is that it cannot confirm protein metabolite interactions, only indicate them for further study because metabolites will collude with hundreds of proteins, it's likely there will be coincidental collusions. To go into detail about more what PROMIS is, it's, it relies on size exclusion chromatography. Uh, in size exclusion chromatography, it, elution is based on the size and shape correlated with uh, a molecule's molecular weight with larger molecules eluding before smaller ones. Promise is dependent on the differences in size of a free small metabolite with a much larger protein metabolite complex. If a metabolite is found to have both diluted uh, in a higher and lower molecular weight retention time, it can be assumed that the metabolite is in complex to, and indicate a possible PMI in that fraction. However, once again, limitations to this un limitations to this approach is that there will be many coincidental collusions because molecules can have similar characteristics to one another, such as in, with this image, um, we see that although that it separates a smaller molecule um, early or later on, um, proteins that have a similar size, such as the in larger fractions may uh, co-elute with the, one another. Um, to explain tick in detail, the method was first developed to monitor protein interactions with uh, target drugs using ion exchange chromatography to provide a, an elution profile of a drug and retention time shift when bound to a protein that is based on their charge. In this work, we could, in this work, it said it could be used either with any ligand essentially. The idea is that a ligand in complex will elute at the same time point as a protein complex in a protein complex since the overall charge will be based on the much larger complex since ligand since ligand and complexes elute on the, based on their charge we cannot establish which of the fractions contain ligand and protein complexes when in the sample 
To overcome this, an oligon only sample acts as the control to mark where molecules can elute an ion exchange. Fractions collected from the sample and control are analyzed using mass spectrometry. Ligands showing different elutions in the sample versus the control are considered protein bound. So the goal of this project uh, over the summer was to formulate a method that can further narrow down PMIs detected using existing techniques by expanding on tick named OmniTick. This could be used to detect cell-wide interactions without the need for a bait. OmniTick uses a similar approach to tick. However, it looks at the different retention times of multiple metabolites and metabolite protein complexes rather than targeted drug interaction. Additionally, we eventually could integrate both OmniTick and PROMISE to identify PMI targets more accurately so that this could be further studied. Moreover, E. coli was used in this because of its fast growth time, simple extraction methods, and it can be, and it can be compared to already known PMI data sets as proof of concept for this project. Um, the hypothesis was that an ion exchange chromatography would be able to separate metabolite protein complexes uh, from free metabolites. Coalition of metabolites and proteins determined using metabolomics and proteomics will allow us to identify punitive PMIs. Moreover, we expect that by combining, by combining results from PROMISE with OmniTIC, we will be able to distinguish between true and coincidental interactors. To begin our workflow, E. coli culture is subjected to lysis to release protein metabolite complexes and free metabolites. The control proteins must be denatured, in our case with heat, and removed. Fil a filtration step is used to remove any additional aggregates. Ion exchanges perform on the control sample, control and sample separately. Elution off the column is done using ion strength gradient generated by increasing concentration of sodium chloride. After ion exchange separation, all collected fractions will undergo metabolite and protein extraction to further analyze each sample uh, using LCMS. Obtained data of mass to charge ratios and retention times will be used to plot an elution profile for proteins and metabolites. Any discrepancies from the control from, uh, from the control in the sample would indicate there could be a PMI in that fraction. Um, so here is an image of our ion exchange chromatogram of all uh, three replicates we performed uh, of this experiment um, for using ion exchange. Uh, the fractions collected were between one to 24 uh, MLs, uh, which was dependent on our flow and gradient at, uh, gradient method. Uh, the working method was the same for all three. Um, additionally, what we can see in this graph are the different peaks, especially in the control, indicating that because of the absor the absorbance we see on the y-axis at 280, that there is um, protein in that fraction, indicating there's likely uh, some interaction going on there. Um, Additionally, what we can see is that there are very similar plots um, shown, which gives us promise that this, that this project is replicable. And then anything we see that, that we do see in the control um, below is likely due, any absorbance that we see below in the control is that there, that there are metabolites that show absorbance at 280. So this uh, isn't surprising to us either. So for our replication of one and two, uh, we have our metabolites results, had our metabolites results analyzed um, in Germany. And from that, here's what we have. Um, we have a heat map kind of showing the differences between the control and sample fractions um, based on their overall abundance with red being more abundant and then the blue, not so much. And we can see just like looking at the image that there is a different, a clear difference between the control and sample fractions. And then on the right, we have uh, some pictures of graphs. These are kind of just what we chose out of the analysis. Um, a lot of it, some of them are dipeptides that seem interesting to us. Um, what's important to note is that there's a different, different, clear differences in the peaks that we see in the control versus the sample. Uh, this difference that we see could mean that there's a, that there's likely a PMI in these fractions, since we're able to detect that there that this metabolite is both that it's 
this metabolite is in a different fraction than where it would have been found in a control. So the progress right now of Omnitic is for the metabolite analysis, um, replicate three is in the process of being analyzed. And then we plan on comparing all three replicates for a better comparative analysis for the results. Additionally, um, protein analysis is kind of stalled at the moment. The pellets already uh, are already collected and replicate one is digested and two and three need to be digested. However, um, in, in the future, uh, the goal is to perform proteomics on these samples uh, to better understand uh, and look for target PMIs. But for the moment, we kind of are working on this kind of side project with uh, frame slab. And when we look at this, we have on with worms performing Omnitic. So on the left side, we have more um, heat maps, kind of just distinguishing where we see um, differences in the control and sample fractions, again, once again, of different um, metabolites. We have the uh, negative ion mode and positive ion mode, which are just different detection methods in, uh, for the mass spec. So one of these that uh, thankfully Binkson provided the data for um, that they kind of are interested is in Escaricide 3, which is a uh, worm hormone. Um, and we can see from the graph that um, from the control and to the sample that we get peaks in later fractions, indicating that there's probably a PMI in that uh, fraction. Uh, we're able to detect, they were able to detect this. Um, additionally, like the biological relevance and importance of this hormone is that um, in nematodes, it's able to regulate development, social signaling and reproduction. So it's interesting to see um, what we could probably get looking at uh, different organisms and trying to see that Omnitic also works on these. So uh, summary and for what's next, from the cro chromatograms, the replication of this bacteria was, uh, was able to work using the method on both bacteria and in worms. So after many weeks of troubleshooting and working on this project, I think that this is kind of something that we were like really happy about and it's exciting to see what, what could happen in the future. Um, for the metabolites extractions, they're already complete and we're just waiting to compare the results um, all together with the third replicate. Um, protein, protein, proteomics will be performed eventually and hopefully soon. Um, promise will go through, promise will go through similar extraction methods. So we plan on we planned on doing more promise experiments in order to compare um, with our E. coli replicates. And then um, we eventually wanna perform Omnitic on other organisms like worms or plants, or you could probably do it with other, whatever organism you want. So for our acknowledgements, I like to acknowledge Ola and Matej, Matej especially because he was a really good mentor kind of showing me and guiding me through the process and learning all these biochemistry techniques so it was really cool um, this summer. Um, additionally, uh, thank the Golem Group in Germany um, because they were running the mass spec analysis on all our samples. And from Frank Slab, Bingson, and Arnold, Arnold providing the them providing the worms and the data uh, of the worm samples. Kathy, I think if I unmute here, we might be able to, I might yeah. have to repeat them. I can hear. You can hear? Okay. Um, okay. My question? This is a, my, my question was, was how many metabolites, metabolites are you actually looking at here in these assays? Is this dozens, dozens hundreds, thousands? How, how I complex? think it was up in the hundreds or thousands, but um, what we were able to compare or what was able to compare was about 50 metabolites that were similar in both 50, around 50 metabolites that were able to be uh, found with differences in both the control and the sample for replicate one and replicate two. 
I also want to remind people who are listening online, we are taking online questions also. I think Natalie is monitoring the chat. So if you type in your questions in the chat, we can get them asked also. No further questions? Okay, thank you.